SEMO head coach Tom Matukowicz, the Red Hawks 4-1, 1-0 uh, in the OVC after their win at Lindenwood. They'll host Tennessee Tech on Saturday. So, Coach, some thoughts on the Red Hawks, and then uh, we'll go to the, the questions waiting for you. Yeah, we're excited about the victory on the road. You know, we certainly have a lot of respect for Lindenwood, and uh, their coaches did a really good job of preparing their team, and they got some really good players, and it was a game uh, most of the – all four quarters. So, uh, you know, it was a lot of fun. I think that rivalry will turn into something pretty fun and I uh, look forward to that. Thanks coach. Uh, Jake, I, I missed your hand a second ago. If you want to go first with your questions, uh, you go ahead for coach. Sure. Uh, coach, just to start off, you know, you guys rolling right now, you know, quarterbacks playing well, running backs, playing, everyone's really playing well. Uh, to, do you know, do you feel that, you know, you guys are peaking at the right time? Yeah, I don't. I mean, I, I watched the film and I don't think we're, we're playing average. I know you, you and everybody else getting all these sugar coated lies and oh my God, look at this and look at that. All right. Well, when you flip on the film, there's a bunch of stuff that we got to do better. Such as? Well, one is the ball security. Um, we had some pathetic, I mean, look like we're, we're not even coached. Uh, ball security around the goal line. We're flagging the ball like we're in a carnival or something instead of a football game. And so no, that's number one on offense. I know when we spoke a few weeks ago, you mentioned a couple of years ago, or maybe it was last year, that Gino couldn't even catch a baby if, if you threw right in front of him. Um, and now he's, you know, worked on his hands, worked on his game. What, um, you know, for him to have the breakout game he did and the way he did it to, you know, to become SEMO's new touchdown king, uh, how, how, how proud are you of him and how have you seen him grow during your time there? Man, I, so two things. Um, one is that's just uh, a great life lesson that I hope everybody listens that you're not born a certain way. Um, you know, Gino was obviously a gifted runner, but there's a lot of skill sets that he hadn't developed. And he wasn't good at it, but he, he lost the ego and went about trying to fix that. And now he's more of a complete player. Um, but off the field, I, I had my proudest moment of Gino uh, at Iowa State. We didn't even try to run it because, you know, I had to go to junior college for a reason, but I'm not that dumb. We're not going to sit there and run it against it. Uh, Iowa State. After the game, after he had like two yards rushing, he pulled the whole team up and told him exactly what he should be telling him, just like what I would tell him. But a couple of years ago, he would have been a tender booty over in the locker room, sitting down all depressed because he didn't get his yards. And so that's just the mature, that that's the, the difference uh, between this year's Gino and in the past. He's really turned it on from a, a leadership role. And how is that, has that at all helped him in terms of performance on the field? Absolutely. Uh, but great ones make others better. I mean, you're not a great one if you're not uh, making other ones beside you and behind you and in front of you better. And, and he's starting to do that. We feed off him. Um, and uh, it's been been great to see. And he was so he doesn't listen to your podcast talking about how good he is. Because it's pretty, it's a slow fade. All of a sudden, you think you arrived and then you turn it over. Well, you know, it's funny you mentioned that because first couple of weeks of the season, he was quiet and didn't really get into the end zone. And then I think in the home opener, that kind of changed. And now he's kind of catching fire. But he went a couple of weeks where it was a little slow in terms of production and finding the end zone. Yeah, you know, and that's why every game's different, you know. And so you just got to understand that at the end of the day, the mission is to be successful. And that looks different ways each week. But, um, you know, be ready for your opportunity, but don't don't sit there and have a pity party if your number wasn't called that week. I know when we spoke a couple of weeks ago, you mentioned you don't really like comparisons. When I asked you, do you feel this is where your team should be? But I do want to ask you, based on your, I guess, miscues you saw on tape, is the offense ahead of the defense or is the defense ahead of the offense at this point in the year? Offense is ahead of the defense. And uh, ultimately, if so, I'm sure Coach Alexander is saying right now, you know, uh, do we have a championship defense? Like the mission is a championship. When OBC, do we have a good enough defense to do that? We can't make excuses about uh, injuries. 
and, and so uh, we have to get better there. Uh, there's been spurts, but there's been progression. But uh, we are underperforming there a little bit in my mind. I think we're better than the results we're creating. And if we don't play better uh, this week, we're going to give up another 500 yards uh, to a really talented Tennessee Tech offense. Thanks, Coach. Tom Davis, you're up. So that leads right – you kind of just answered my question a little bit. Your defensive secondary – has been decimated with injury. So I don't want to be too harsh on them because it's a bunch of guys uh, playing a lot of snaps and a bunch of guys maybe didn't think they were going to play as many snaps and that sort of thing. Um, are you seeing growth in the secondary, though? Are you seeing week-to-week -week progress from that secondary? Or is it hard to measure because you got different bodies in there all the time? Yeah, I, I'm encouraged, but I'm – uh, not satisfied, like we have to improve. I think when you when you talk about what you want, you just want consistency, and it's hard to have consistency if you don't have a consistent lineup. Yeah. And so we've been there, but uh, this will be as healthy as we've been in the secondary. So we didn't lose anybody Saturday. We bring all those guys back for one more week, and there needs to be um, – you know, more consistency and we, you know, we got to have great fundamentals and eye discipline and, and those type of things and try to limit some of those explosive plays. Is Nate Cordy going to be available this week? Yes. Okay. And uh, Keandre Booker has been really productive and wreaking havoc in the offensive backfield um, from a defensive standpoint. What makes him special? Why is he so effective? We must not have watched the Lindenwood game because he was average. I didn't. Okay. You couldn't even tell uh, he played. I did not watch the film. So if you want to stop by the office, I could show you some of those clips. Okay. All right. That works for me. Thanks for your time, Coach. You bet. Coach, appreciate uh, appreciate your time this morning. Best of luck uh, this weekend, and we'll talk to you uh, next week. Sounds good.